Hello, my name is Alessandro Capuano and I am a pediatric neurologist working in the movement disorder clinic of Bambino Gesù Children's Hospital in Rome. Um, today for me it's a great pleasure to discuss with you our paper recently published on developmental medicine and child neurology uh, entitled Pre-status and status dystonicus in children and adolescents. Uh, in this paper, um, we report our experience in the management, in the recognition and the, the treatment and the relapse risk uh, of status dystonicus in children. We reviewed uh, retrospectively uh, medical charts of uh, 336 patients over a period of eight years uh, recorded um, 63 episodes of acute exacerbation of dystonia. Uh, so research uh, on status dystonicus is challenging because the definition of status dystonicus is not so uh, clear. We have uh, for status dystonicus a definition of 1998 uh, where status dystonicus is referred to acute worsening of dystonia requiring hospital admission and this generally accepted definition was our main inclusion criteria in the study. But one of the main issues in definition of this of the status dystonicus and the, the pre-status dystonicus, so uh, the pre-status dystonicus defined as the uh, immediately preceding steps before acute uh, worsening of dystonia. Uh, the main issue uh, is how many hours, how many days, or what is the number of acute exacerbation I need to define status dystonicus. So the lack of an operative status dystonicus definition is the main problem in the research on status dystonicus. So uh, we adopted uh, a, a new classification for dystonia severity uh, proposed in 2003 by Lumsden and co-authors um, called the Dystonia Severity Action Plan Scoring System. This system is a simple grading system for medical severity of status dystonicus and we consider the grade 3 of Dystonia Severity Action Plan as pre-status dystonicus. Uh, so acute dystonia worsening required hospitalization but without evidence of metabolic decompensation. The grade 4 and the grade 5 were considered the status dystonicus itself in the presence in the grade 4, in the presence of fever and uh, metabolic decompensation and the grade, the grade 5 uh, reserved for patients requiring intensive care unit hospitalization for organ support due to respiratory, cardiovascular or renal compromise. Status dystonicus in children is not an uncommon neurological emergency. In fact, we uh, have an acute exacerbation up to 10% of children with dystonia in our court. Another important issue in the management of status dystonicus is uh, addressing and treating precipitant factors or trigger factors of worsening dystonia. We found um, at least one trigger factor in 65% of cases and the proportion of trigger factors increased 
with the severity of dystonia. So, the infection are the most common, common precipitant factors in our court. Infection of respiratory tract, uh, lower and upper respiratory tract, and painful stimuli. The core of our study was to analyze uh, the acute management of status dystonicus episodes. And uh, in this regard, uh, we um, analyze the temporizing uh, sedation for patients with oral and intravenously benzodiazepine and alternatively to benzodiazepine also the clonidine uh, transdermal or intravenously. But the dystonia specific drugs are another important core feature of status dystonicus management because in the 67% of cases oral antidystonic therapy was recalibrated. So tetrobenazine, baclofen, triexifenidyl or dopamine receptor blockers were recalibrated, were added as new drugs or were recalibrated if effective before the um, onset of status dystonicus. And don't mind that in about 30% of cases the intensive care unit admission is needed for this patient. Another challenging issue in the management of status dystonicus um, is the relapse risk of status dystonicus in patients after the first episode. So, uh, as you can see, we were able to calculate the risk at one year for these patients uh, reaching 25% at one year. But we didn't find any correlation between relapser or no relapser group uh, as regard the age of dystonia onset or the age at first status dystonicus or time from dystonia onset or hospitalization days. Just the total follow-up period was longer in relapser group compared to no relapser group but maybe due to the severity of dystonia in the relapser patients. Finally, uh, in our court, seven cases uh, obtained a remission of status dystonicus uh, by stereotactic pallidotomy. Uh, one patient underwent two consecutive interventions for relapse of severe medical resistance status and two patients underwent uh, two um, elective pallidotomy after having obtained status dystonicus remission by medical therapy. So, pallidotomy can be considered in medical refractory cases with no deep brain stimulation applicability. So, in conclusion, our study uh, contribute to uh, management of status dystonicus in children. So, enjoy our paper and uh, I think the paper will be useful for your uh, clinical practice.